Now let's look at the nature of interference in relation to trespass. Interference is either intentional, direct or indirect. Looking at intentional interference first, this is the first requirement that the interference should be intentional. In the case of Smith, some men dumped the defendant onto someone else's land. The court held that there is no trespass committed because the defendant had no intention to be on that land. However, in the case of League against Cruel Sports Limited, the defendants strayed on to the claimant's property on seven occasions. The court held that if these hunters had allowed, permitted their dogs to be strayed on, on, on the claimant's land, then there was intentional trespass committed by the defendants. Direct interference. This means that there is no intervention between the commission of the act by the defendant and its consequences against the claimant. For example, entering on someone's land would be direct interference. Also, throwing rubbish into someone's garden is also direct interference. Indirect interference is on the other hand where there is intervention between the commission of the act and resulting consequences for the claimant. For example, branches of the defendant's tree hanging out to the, to the claimant's land. Also, water, for example, seeping from gutter of the defendant to the claimant's house. This is example of indirect interference.